Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, welcome to lecture number four, which is the continuation of lecture number three as such. Uh, in the last lecture, we have created a credential file, which is key.json. We have created the resource file, which is we are trying to create Google storage bucket. Uh, and this is the resource name and this is the bucket name and this is the location. And we have also created the provided.tf file where in, in our case provided was Google. And this is the syntax you can need to define the project, region, and the credentials key.json. So the agenda for this lecture is to just run those three special command uh, like terraform init plan and apply and to see what happens when we run those commands. So I'll just save those files because if you see this is the symbol, uh, the circle icon like my file is not saved. I'll just hit control S. I'll go to provider.tf and hit control S. So now my files are saved. And uh, what we'll do is like we'll go to the terminal and we'll try to execute those commands. So from here you see terminal. I'll just say new terminals. And I'll just go to this directory because always remember we have to execute the commands um, where your Terraform files are present. So you have to execute in your Terraform code folder because this is our Terraform code folder. So we are into this folder. That's quite good. And we can see that we have keys.json, main.tf, and provider.tf, right? So once I execute the first command, that is terraform init, which will initialize the working directory. And uh, before that, we can just see whether terraform is installed or not. Terraform hyphen hyphen version. We'll just change this to Okay, let's see. Okay, so Terraform is installed. That's quite good. And then we'll execute the first command, which is Terraform init. And what Terraform init will do is it will check for your provider. In our case, the provider is Google. And it will try to install and download all the required files for this Google provider. So you'll see a plugin file as such. And first let me put that command. Terraform init in it. Hit enter. You see that it is initializing the backend and it is finding the latest version of HashiCorp Google provider, as you could see, and it is installing the Google provider and Terraform has been successfully initialized. So, as I mentioned, it will install the plugin files and uh, we can also see the installed plugin file as such. Once it is initialized, which is initialized, and it will create a dot terraform folder. If you see this folder is created, and it would also create terraform.log.hcl. So, what these files will contain? So, if I just expand this, so you see this is terraform. Uh, Google provider if you see and this is the version 5.3.0 and if we see the terraform log.hcl it will have the version details and also the provider which is Google in our case and the provider version is also listed over here and so now if I execute terraform init again it will not download this plugin file so let me show you that if I just take this up 
close this for a moment. Terraform init. Previously, it has downloaded these files, right? Now it says Terraform has been successfully initialized. And it says reusing previous version of HashiCorp Google. So previously, if I see over here, it was finding the latest version and installing and downloading. But this time, it is reusing because it is already there from the dependency log file, we can see the version. And dependency log file is this, uh, terraform.log.hcl. And using previously installed uh, provider. Perfect. So we can see now like the installed HashiCorp Google provider plugin and the terraform.log.hcl file. So what next? Um, so let me see if I can just show you something else. Okay. Yeah, so I was just thinking if we delete those files like the .terraform folder And if I also delete the terraform.log.hcl. And now if I run, let me clear. Now if I run terraform in it, it should download the plugin again. So yeah, if you see it has uh, created the Dr. Form folder and this is the provider Google and this is the Telform log.hcl and you can see the same version and everything. And now if I just run Terraform dot, sorry, Terraform plan, you can just keep an eye over here on the left hand side, whether any new files are getting added after executing Terraform plan or not. So let me execute Terraform plan. So you see this Terraform.df state and it will disappear. Let the plan get finished. So you see that file has gone again. So this window will show you like what is the plant it is creating uh, a resource as such and this is like google storage bucket and this is the bucket name gcs first uh, sorry this is the resource block name this is the resource type and this is the resource block name and you see that resource google storage bucket will be created and what is the name for the bucket is this and location is this this is the name and few other parameters are known after apply so this is the plan one to add zero to change and now if i run terraform apply whatever configuration we have written in our configuration file right after applying uh, or after hitting the terraform apply it will ask for a confirmation and we can type yes and uh, it will create a storage bucket as such so let me run terraform apply and hit the enter it should ask me for a confirmation and also just to show you if i go to my google cloud storage bucket Currently, is there any bucket in my account? And you see this is the one of the bucket, but this is not our bucket. Our bucket name is uh, <clears throat> a hyphen 
sorry, a dash cloud dash bootcamp one. So if I just click on yes over here, if my Terraform configuration is correct, it should add that resource or it's, you see that it says creating apply completed resource one added. So let's go to the console and refresh to see my bucket is created here. So you see, this is the bucket which we have created, a cloud boot channel. So this is how um, you can create a resources using Terraform. And if I go to the VS Code, it has created this terraform.tf state file. After the Terraform apply, this file gets created. Yeah, and if you see, this is a JSON structure file, which will have information regards to your resource. And we can also see the resource name, like it should show somewhere. Yeah, this is the ID and this is the name. And these are the attributes of the resources. So this is just a kind of file which will Terraform will always create as such. Whenever you add any resource or delete any resource, it will just try to compare this with this Terraform.tf state file as such. So there will be a bucket which we have seen. And suppose if I do Terraform plan again, right? Let's see what happens. It shouldn't create the resource. It should check the state file. And let's see what it says. But still running. So it should return that no changes because it will read the Terraform state file and it will just refresh the state and um, it will check whether, okay, that storage bucket is already there and no changes required. So it will not create that bucket again. So that's why we are having this state file here and it is important in Terraform to manage the state. And we will also see the state file in detail in the Terraform state lecture. But uh, yeah. Just thought to give you an overview. So if you see, it says no changes, uh, your infrastructure matches the configuration. So it always compares with this Terraform uh, state files. And now coming back to the credentials, uh, and I, I mentioned like why it is important, right? Just to authenticate. And let's say, suppose if I just put a comment over here, commenting means it will not be considered as in my code file. And I'll just save my file and let's see what happens. And if I just uh, enter Terraform in it. And let's run Terraform plan. It should give me an error. You see, uh, it says to use your, sorry, it says that no credentials uh, or access token is being set in the provider block because we have commented these credentials. It means it will not consider. Hope you are aware of uh, commenting in your codes and Google could not find default credentials and it is asking us to create a credential. So let me uncomment or remove my comment and let's save the file again and let's turn Terraform plan. And it will say no infrastructure changes because we already have this bucket being created. But it will not give this credential error. Yeah, because we have um, mentioned the credentials. So it looks good. It haven't uh, thrown any error. So let's try to destroy this resource using Terraform and destroy command. So it will destroy the resources and uh, we can check in the console. Uh, let's hit a refresh. Let's see whether that 
command is executed or not. So it will show the details like what resource will be destroyed. So you see it is checking refreshing state and it is asking for the confirmation. You see this time it is destroy over here and uh, yeah, this resource will be destroyed. And it says one to destroy this time. So if I enter yes, and if we quickly go to our console to see our bucket is removed or not or destroyed, So let's refresh this. Let me go back in the bucket section. Okay, so we we don't see our bucket which was a dash cloud something like that. If you see, if you want to see the name, let me go back to my VS Code again. This was our bucket name, and we don't see the yeah. bucket. Uh, over here as such. So um, in this way, we can write our configuration file with required resource code and deploy our infrastructure using Terraform. So we will see more in Terraform and all in-depth videos will be created uh, like on Terraform state, file, provider, resource. Don't worry, I haven't explained the resource syntax and all, but I'll explain in the next videos as such. And uh, thank you so much for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next.